lagi Cukulah kau dapatkan teori Burung kaya I'm gonna do some yoga or something. Get my body going. We can, can we do it together? Yeah. I'd love to stretch with you, babe. Are you sure, babe? I miss you so much. I know she's so distant. Well, we have to be. Um, we haven't. You haven't gotten tested. Since I know. Let me it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing because it's like, and I know you're right. You're absolutely right. And this is how we we're supposed to do it. But, and it's it's a silly feeling that I have. Is I I feel like I don't have it. You know what I mean? That feeling of, I yeah. just kind of, I would bet my life on it that I don't have it. Famous last we, words of everything. I know, I know, but we still have to go through the, we still have to go through the motions. Yeah. But I'm just being honest. I have that feeling, you know, as well. So it's like, it feels weird in that way. You, you know, know um, my initial instinct and reaction to what you just said yeah. is fear and anxiety. Because, you know, like in, in the Philippines, they always put this thing where it's like, buyog, 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 which is like, Classic. don't say any, don't make any bold declarations yeah. because what life will do is prove you wrong. Yeah, but we're luckily, time. we're not in the Philippines. That what only works is, in on those islands. Right. Buyog, buyog, buyog. Buyog. What I want to say to you is buyog with a capital B. I want to say buyog to you with an exclamation mark <laughs> and a fuck and a, and a fuck a finger. That's rude. I, I love you though, but I, I don't, miss you. I miss you too. But it's like we're we're in a house and we're like we can't touch and. But we're guess what? Away. Guess what? I'm what? the one who has to sleep on the couch. Oh, she's on the couch. Yeah, that's a gender role reversal. It is gender, gender, gender. <laughs> boya, boya, boya. But the thing, <laughs> but I've been, I just, I've been sleeping like a baby. How have you been sleeping, Kalala? Wonderful, actually. I love that couch, and also I like waking up with the sun. He does not. That's why he gets a bedroom because they it, the bedroom's the only place with a blackout blinds. Yeah, and um, the living room is pretty bright during the day, so I rise with the sun, guys. Yeah, when I'm out, I'm out. I've been having some fucking deep fucking sleeps, my friend, with just crazy ass dreams. It's crazy. Like what? Well, one time my dad was upstairs. We're in the old house, and he, my guy, dad goes, "Let's go get the car, right?" And I picked the car up with my right hand. <laughs> it goes a handle on the side of the car. I picked it up like a luggage case, and I brought it upstairs. Whoa! It was weird. And I go, "Here it is." Dad. I was fighting with it. Here it is, then. And that was the dream. Interesting. I picked up a car with a little handle on the side, a little Prius. Anyway, d- dreams don't make any sense, do they? No. That's what's magical about them, you know? I watched Inception again. It's a good movie. Speaking yeah. of dreams. Yeah. With with Jules, right? Yeah, she is, really liked it. Is there it. a first time? It was her first time. Like I don't it. understand it. Do you understand it? I love it. I don't it's, understand it. It's pretty it. easy to understand. It's you're extracting information from someone via their dreams. Yeah, I still don't understand. I don't even understand what you're just saying right now. <laughs> that's how complicated she's I, accepting that's how right complicated you're, you're, yeah this i love your cute little pants thank you um all of christopher nolan's movies are very um complex in that way and that's why i won't even see tenant yeah i heard tenant was a because people book. are like people are like i don't get it so i just like i, I did interstellar i tried it you know the, floating in a library memento in a fourth dimension i don't get it right i have a i, I have a thought for today can i give you a thought of a day you know do you, this might be dumb, right? But I was thinking about this when I woke up. Do you do you guys know how many kind, passive, non confrontational no, women out there named Karen? Yes, I do. That's my point. But how fucked are they with that? Now Karen I think is about I think about kind Karen all the time. I went to. I went to Long Beach City College with her. Yeah. We took all of our pre-nursing classes together. She is sober. She is now an ER nurse. Yeah. She is one of the gentlest, kindest people. I've Every ever Karen met. I know is nice. But then they put that fucking name out there. It's like Hitler Adolf fucked up the name Hey Adolf. Yeah, I don't know right. any Adolfs. I don't know any Adolfs anymore. Wait, no one's going to name fucking people, Karen, women Karen anymore. I think if we have a kid, we I would like just by Let's just like principle, we have to name we have to do Karen. Karen. But imagine this, Gilbert. You know, like, I'm sure there are guys, you know, out there that like like to masturbate out in the fucking public. Yeah. Right? What if they just start calling those guys Gilberts? Oh, let's not do that. Though. I know, but let's my not point. Put that out <laughs> I know. On the but my point is, right? Karen's got fucked. Yeah. Yeah. There's a yeah, Karen Gillan. She's famous. Yeah, there's so many nice Karen. Uh, any celebrities are no name Karen? Karen Gillan. Karen O. 
Karen, Karen O. Who's from Karen the o? Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. South Korean. Karen O. From the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. There aren't a lot of movie stars, though, huh? No, except Karen Gillum. Karen Gillum. Karen Nam is also a girl I went to the international school with growing up. She's a, she's Korean. Yeah. And she is one of the nicest girls ever. Yeah. He, can I tell you my second thought of the day? Mm-hmm. Asian people don't look alike. There it is. I'll tell you why. There it is. I'll tell you why, though. Because in Hawaii... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I got recognized five times with wearing a mask. Oh, you know how special that is, feels? God. So just don't breathe it in. Suck it in. Just let it let it sink in. Just let it sink in for a second, all right? I'm just saying. I got to get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> I know you do, but just let Reception, it sink in. wake up. These are, <laughs> oh, know, where's reality, my little reality. totem? <laughs> Fall backwards. And not only that, right? All the recognitions, right, were via car whizzing by. So I'm wearing a mask. You're wearing a beanie, though, huh? What's the point? The beanie is you. That's your brand. Really, I'm the only Asian guy out there that wears a beanie. In the tropics, yes. <laughs> in Hawaii, probably. 95 degree weather, yes. Eating an acai bowl in the car? Yeah. I was wearing uh, eating acai while we were out. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I was wearing acai, wearing a beanie, and my Gucci glasses. Okay, man. <laughs> but So that's what it is? That's exactly that's what it exactly, is. You have man. a look. Also, you, I... I, I I want to prove you wrong because oh, um, Kasim G just sent me a photo <laughs> of someone that he scrolled past through on Bumble. And um, you're going to really, I saw the photo. You're going to really make me mad right now. I, I haven't uh, seen it. I am going to show you a picture of someone he saw on Bumble. And what do you think, Gilb? That's photoshopped. Oh, of who? Who do you think that is? Just a Hawaiian. <laughs> A generic one. <laughs> you know, what is it? It's Bobby. Or... It's not Bobby. It's his doppelganger on Bumble. That's real? That's real. It's so the cheeks are so good. It's literally you with hair. I saw that I saw it. I thought he was using one of those a weird app. I thought so too. At first. Mm-hmm. But when I took a look close look, I feel so bad for that lady. I think if you didn't exist, she'd be considered cute. But the fact that there's a reference <laughs> no, to you out there. No, no, no. no. That's rude. <laughs> like that's na- an attack and that's rude. Because like that would really suck for me if like if I kind of sort of looked like, you know, if I was just myself, that's fine. But if yeah. there's a reference out there for someone who's like super goofy looking that sort of looks like me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd be really upset. Yeah. She does look a lot like me. But I'm sure there are people. I mean, you have to think how many there's billions of people on planet Earth. There's got to be one person. That's gonna look exactly like you, sweetie. I look like Takashi. Yeah, I know you do. Without makeup and a certain angle, I'm not even lying to you. Yeah, I have Daniel Hernandez features. Yeah. So I'm not upset about that. I just think that you know, genetically, that's the gamble. Yeah, that's why I like. It. I think tattoos on the face is cool. Mm. You know, like if there was like if I if 30 people I knew that looked just like me, like her, in LA, I might get something on my face. Like I one see. tattoo. And an identifier. Yeah. Which it's would be? me. I don't know. It's me, Bob, or, oh, it or says, a symbol. Got it. Or TB, tiger belly. You know, I think that's, we, should, we should get tattoos. On a face? On the face. A little TB. I have been dying to get a neck tattoo, like right in the middle of my goiter. In the what's throat? A, what's a goiter? I don't have a goiter, but right smack in the middle of the middle of my de- neck. Just like, um, Tepa- um or what's his name? The Undertaker? Yeah, you guys watch WWE? I know Undertaker. I know he has like Sarah across his neck. Can we all get one TB on our necks? I I, I like my leg. No, on our necks. Neck? I want it on my cheek or my neck. Yeah, right. Just like underneath the ear. You know how little white girls do it? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You do it? Yeah. Just TB though. I think you don't like TB, right? Because that's like. I think think it's cute if we all get the same one though. I think that's so stupid. And so why would we do that on the side of the neck? No, it's either <laughs> it's either you do something bold, like right in the middle, or on your face, or don't do it at all. It's so corny otherwise. Why? It's just it's like you're trying to just have like a cute little corner. I, I'm just not I'm not sold on that. I, I like big bold tattoos. Like if you're gonna do it, show it. So like you like Conor McGregor tattoos? I do. And I, I, I think that he is as the original Tiger Belly, I bow down to him. I, mm. But I think that it's uh 
when tattoos are in um, places that you can't really see, and then people discover it. You know what I mean? There's it's 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 a it, it's a good feeling. Well, know? the first time I had sex with you, and you first saw the one I on my ass, right? The one on your ass. Yeah. Um, Initial thoughts. Initial thoughts was like, is he like an emo white boy with an no, no, star? No, 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 that's not a, that's a special tattoo for you. He got it before the date. Before what did you think when you saw my tramp stamp in the back? I thought with dirty white chick. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. Dirty little Smashley, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I liked it. It was a little secret for me. It's like you know, we should get. Well, how about on the? No one gets tattoos on the bottom of their feet. It's gonna slough off really soon. Really? Because your happen? feet sheds a lot, so it's gonna fade really quickly. Oh, that's even better. So Let's like, get something elaborate on the bottom of our feet. Babe, you're gonna <laughs> tattoo over your fungus. I feel bad for the artist. Yeah. What about my eczema? Oh yeah. <laughs> what well, well, you can you can incorporate that fungus into it. You know how some people get moles and stuff, and then they make it an eyeball? Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't they do that? Yeah. Yeah, they incorporate it. What's up? Go ahead. Uh, I have some insight on your dream. Uh, this is from a medical website. And- Are you being real? Yes. Okay. To dream of holding up an impossibly heavy stone with all your superpower strength may reflect a surprising level of persistence in the face of enormous challenge. There we go. Feeling that you are holding on and defying impossible expectations. Does it have to do with anything happening in your life right now? No. Interesting. Absolutely well, not. No, I have no idea what you <laughs> say it again. I mean just, just I'll go, I'll give, go. give me the uh, Basically you're up against impossible odds and you're overcoming it. You feel like you can defi- you're defying something in the moment. Like even your real life. That's what at least your dream is perceiving. Is it being on set? I feel like that's just been his whole life is defying. Are all your dreams picking up heavy things? I don't know. Um I don't know. I've been reading audiobooks on, um, not reading. Is it, is, when you listen to audiobooks. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hey, that's a t shirt. Thank wait, wait, you for wait, wait. the next t shirt. Let me ask you something. What audiobooks have you been read reading, it. babe? Well, I'm, is r- r- listening to audiobooks reading? Uh, yeah. I say yeah. Or is it? I do that. Or is it? Um, but it's not reading, though. Yeah, but I've been, I was listening to this one. Let me show you what it is. I don't know why Brendan Shop keeps texting me. <laughs> What is he saying? Oh, I can't even get into it. Um, cool. Put it later. on FaceTime. It has to do with um, the personal stuff. <laughs> Dude, um, definitely don't I'm not, not recite to, it. No, on but here. last night I was. I'm, I've been listening to. The, um, I've been reading "The Denial of Death" by oh. Ernest Becker. I don't know that book. It's a book written in the seventies. He died, but um, <laughs> he died <Okay. laughs> right after he, he, <laughs> he wrote, wrote the it. Book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's um. Basically, you know, Western perspective on um, and philo- ph- ideas about death, and he's just kind of dismantling it. You know, um, how we do we do a bunch of things to um, escape the the inevitable. You mm-hmm. know, and um, I don't know what it is. I think when you're getting to fifty, which is where I am at, I've never had these thoughts before, but there there is this kind of looming idea of it now that seems closer you know and it's really fucking scary yeah because and and it's it's so funny that we all everyone is gonna face it Mm -hmm. you know but um but i'm like woody allen that way you know what what is his quote is um um i'm not afraid of death right i just i just don't want to be there when it happens you know what i mean that's his quote and that's pretty much where I'm at. The, the actual event of it is not necessarily because it's a moment, right? All right what I think I could, I, I could, I could, I think I could challenge the moment and and get through that moment. It'll be anxiety, okay. a lot of anxiety. You're but, the you're the guy in one of the Saw movies. What do you mean? That's how you die. You power through that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Sorry, fine. <laughs> I mean, in in extreme circumstances like that, no, that would suck. Okay. Because I've been watching that show Fauda. What's Fauda? It's a show that I recommended yeah. um, to Bobby. I think that has a lot to do with it too. Wait, give us the yeah the premise. It's basic the premise. Well, he'll give you the premise. It's it's about the Israel Palestine conflict, Gaza Strip. Mm. Um, it's I think it's a phenomenal show. Yeah, I I I, I don't want it by watching because I'm in the third season now. It's like I don't. I feel like it's one sided almost. You know, I know it's does in the first season it doesn't seem like it, but if you look back on it, I mean. It does make everyone human in the show and whatnot, but it's like, you know, 
it's basically shown from the you know the good guys are the Israelis in the show. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? I, so it's like in the, in that sense, you know, I I I struggle oh, with the show, but um, but there's a lot of obviously crazy just random deaths, you know, in it. I think maybe that has a lot to do with my um thinking of it because it's like some in the show especially just you know devices go off and innocent people you know obviously die and it's like you know what a morbid thing to even bring up on on a, a reunion Tiger Belly show. <laughs> Why am I bringing it? Let's talk I, about yeah. Let's talk uh, about your I time in Hawaii. 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 You just came <laughs> Hawaii. What the fuck am I doing? Sunny Hawaii. Acai bowl de cove. Okay. Tell us your daily here we go baby. activities. Here we go. Man, I saw the sun, man. Woo! I didn't think you. Didn't you have like? <laughs> I saw the sun, man. I didn't think about and sunsets. Almost... Didn't you have like nine days off in between? What oh did you do? man, what did I do? I went to see the. Uh, I went to Verdansk. Oh, you're, you're the trigger. Yeah, I went to Verdansk, and then I went to the. <laughs> is that Red Dead Redemption? No, oh, that is your favorite Gulag location. Yeah, yeah. I went to Verdansk, and then I went to the Gulag. Oh, you should show her the shirt you oh, got from it. Yeah. He visited uh, Verdansk. Oh, wait, that's so different. this shirt says Gulag, where boys become men. I a lot of Eastern Europeans would not that's, <laughs> define it that way. They'd be true, very that's angry true, that's with true. that. That'd be weird to go right of that in, in Eastern, Eastern Europe. Europe. Yeah, yeah, They'd yeah, be yeah. like, "Sir, take that yeah, off." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, this is "Welcome to Vernansk." Good old. Good did old. you buy that or did Gilbert buy? Gilbert that bought for it for you? my on Christmas. It's Christmas. Oh, okay, but I also got you. Yeah. Nice Gilbert got me the best Christmas present which I have what? ever received in my life. Which is what? He taught me about it, too. I'm obsessed with the brand. There are these um, knives from a Filipino um, knife maker mm. called um, Booyang, National. Booyang. Mm -hmm. And they, I'm in love. So Thanks he so got you. Deal. Like, they're, they're like $800 knives. He got you $800 knives, and I got two three dollar fucking no uh, keep in mind the shipping cost more because it was christmas so i paid 150 for express shipping really yeah thank you then for national no, no for not the, for national but the two clothes i got oh well, the actual then... items are two dollars but the shipping, shipping was, was expensive um, <laughs> during christmas yeah so let's talk hawaii i'll tell you what hawaii how hawaii yeah how hawaii is like um hawaii is a lonely <laughs> i'm turning 50 but free <laughs> No, Hawaii was um, it was fun. You know, I um, I always miss Kalila and um, the animals right away when I'm there, because you're just constantly just by yourself. And also, you know, her voice is always in my head, Kalila's, in terms of like, wear a mask. You know what I mean? What do you get, <laughs> get further away from that person? Your voice enters my, my mind. <laughs> speed walk, speed walk past that person. You know what I mean? Hold your breath. Yeah, hold your breath. Go the other way. <laughs> Give him your back, babe. Give him your back. There's a lot of that, but I did have a conversation. <laughs> can I, I? I had a conversation at the airport, and um, yeah. I was going to bring this up on Bad Friends, but I forgot to. Hey guys, we're going to take a really quick break to share some amazing sponsors with you, babe. Yeah. What interferes with your happiness? Nothing anymore because of better help. You know, I be you know before the pandemic, I never did therapy, and then I signed up for better help. And it's changed my life and the direction of my life. Number one, I can deal with my trauma from my past. Number two, um, I have a lot of roadblocks that I'm confronting. And um, BetterHelp is a great um, service because it's available um, worldwide, right? Um, you, you can start communicating with um, a, a therapist in under 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Am I not right? Mm -hmm. Right. And you love, don't you love the options in it too, babe? I do. Yeah. I do especially mm -hmm. love the journal feature in it where I can write down my thoughts throughout the week that my therapist has access to. You guys, is something preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. The and special, also therapists, mm -hmm. think of everyone, if you check, this check, you can do a check mark. What are you laughing at, man? I want to do the check mark. I know. Okay. <laughs> is that what it is? Or is it because I flubbed the line? Well, let me correct you, yeah. by the way. It's not 24 hours. It's under 48 hours. That's what I meant to say. 48, mm -hmm. right? Yes, but if you double the 24, hours. it's 48. Am I not right? Yes. You're right. Am I right? Right yeah. there. Okay, good. So, um, you know, depression, check mark, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT, LGBT matters, you know, mm -hmm. grief, your self-esteem, all these things that we can all relate to. Let's get, let's, let's confront these things, man. 
Anything you share is absolutely confidential. It is. it is convenient, professional, affordable. And you can check out the testimonials posted daily on your site. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Uh -huh. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses when you send your counselor a message. Plus, you can schedule weekly videos or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Tell us more about it, Gilb. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash belly. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health, uh, who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. Um, and I want to see if you think I'm wrong, okay? <laughs> Obviously, it's a conversation with TCA. TSA. TSA. Well, already, you don't even respect, respect them, them enough. He doesn't to. respect them. TSA, him. right? And I feel like I'm not in the wrong. Okay. Okay. So I'm going through security checkpoint, and obviously, you know, you're social distancing, right? And then they're like, you know, you got to take all your, you know, gadgets out, put them in the tray. I did all that, right? And um, I had my iPad and my Nintendo Switch on one tray. Obviously, I forgot them, and I'm now at the gate. Okay. And I completely don't even think about those two items. Mm -hmm. But then my name gets announced on the thing. Mr. Lee, please come to, you know, security checkpoint. So then I realize, oh, fuck. And, I, you know, I run. I run over there. And um, I go to the security guy. I go, hey, um, you guys said, you guys said my name on the uh, thing. And I think I left my um. And he goes, bro. Just listen, right? All right, man. He goes, bro. You Bobby Lee? Uh, yeah, yeah. I had my mask on. He goes, big fam, bro. Fucking tiger belly, bro. Are you already in Hawaii? I'm in Hawaii. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm coming back. Oh, got it. This is me coming back to um, L.A. Yeah. Got it, got it. This just happened. So I think so. another guy goes, hey, bro. Bad friends, bro. Right? I'm feeling pretty good, right? <laughs> and the, the girl, the, down, there's a girl right there, right? And she has my iPad. And my i my phone and my iPad and my Switch, and I go, thank you, and I grab it from her, and she won't let me have it. Mm -hmm. I go, and, and we're kind of doing this pull. I go, thank you, <laughs> and she's like, not you know, a sitcom. Yeah, I go, thank you, right? She like, no, 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 put your code in. Put your code. She wants me to put my code in to my iPad to make it sure it's mine. Oh, gotcha. Right when the, right they announce my name right. Now, when my my phone is freezed, was it frozen? Mm -hmm. It's obviously my wallpaper is my face. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, I oh, can, type it. Right, right. So, I can corroborate. Yeah, yeah. So you can corroborate, right? So my <laughs> wallpaper is my face. All right, full blown high def headshot. Yeah, of just me. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I go. She goes, put the code in. I go, well, that's my face right there. Right, and you can see my face. You know, right? she goes, "Look at this guy with his attitude. Look at this guy with his attitude. Gosh, you know what I mean? Put your code in, like I ask. Gosh, right? I'm like, I'm like I, my fucking face. You're the one that called me, and now I'm fighting. Yeah, you're the one that got the guy just ran at me. What the fuck? Give me the fucking. Put it in. She goes, put the code in. So then I put the code in, and then as I get the shit and put it in, right. As I'm walking away, she's still like fucking celebrities and shit. Look at their attitude. And doing the whole fucking thing, man. Who's in the wrong? <laughs> I, I'd like to weigh in on this. Yeah, go ahead. Mm. How much would it have costed you <laughs> just to just put the code in <laughs> instead of pointing, pointing out to her, look, it's my face. I know that it's common sense, but yeah. it would have just avoided anything after that. Yeah, but how about her point of view? The, I mean, what about her? What would have cost her to just let me have it? Some possibly being yelled at and not following protocol or by that. how they usually do it. Like, imagine yeah. if 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 she, you don't know her past experiences, she might have accidentally given a gadget away to the wrong person. She yeah. might have fears. She might have gotten in trouble already. We don't know any of that. She doesn't know about me. What if I forgot my passcode? What if I had trauma about my passcode? <laughs> no, know about my fucking life. You know what I mean? <laughs> you walk around right? with the iPad. And I'm walking and around with no iPad, uh, iPad. You know what I mean? With no passcode, right? Yeah. And I'm constantly I like watching this. the screen Get this. to keep it open so it doesn't go into the lock. That's tough, right? What if she? What if that's the case? I'd like to put myself in her shoes. Okay, go ahead. 
if I'm receiving, if I'm looking at an iPad, <laughs> And here comes a celebrity. Yeah. And I I'm not look- a celebrity, by the way. I'm not claiming that. You All what? I'm saying. You went to film in Hawaii. Let me. It, it does, who cares? I, I'm, it, just every reoccurring person is a celebrity on a show? You know that's not true. Well, in a Hawaiian airport, you are apparently bad friends, bro. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's you, in that moment you were, right? And you felt it and you felt <sighs> like, oh, okay, this shouldn't be a problem. I'd like to put myself in her shoes. Mm. Okay. Um, here is this man who, number one, I realize my friends are completely enamored by, but I don't personally know him, mm-hmm. right? I'm just trying to do my job. On top of that, when the the lock screen comes on, it's a picture of his face. Immediately, I'm going to have my own biases. I'm going to be like, look at this narcissistic little fuck. And I'm going to just give you trouble. Okay. That's, That's interesting. You're the type of guy, a good woman. I'll tell you who I can <laughs> uh, you're take, I'll tell you the kind of woman you are, right? It just brought me into another scenario, right? And it just depends on who you are, right? Let's say um, Gilbert and I, right, and George are working at a coffee shop, okay? I'm the cashier, right? Yeah. You're the barista, both of you. This is just the kind of person I am, right? And some actor walks in that I don't know, right? Some just guy, right? George goes, man, I love you on Frisco the Man, some show, right? (laughs) Let's say there's a show called yeah. Frisco My the Man. My ferret was named Frisco. All right. You, you, right? you go, you're great on Frisco, yeah. right? And then Gilbert goes, oh, fuck. The guy from Frisco's here. Yeah. Right? I don't know him, right? He comes to the fucking cashier. I'm going to go, you know what? It's on the house. I don't know him, right? But apparently these two guys know him. Big, they're big fans. Probably a big deal, right? Right? Go ahead. Ha- on the house. It's not going to hurt the, you know what I mean? And if my boss goes, why'd you give him? I go, hey, dude, he was a star. You know, just nice yeah, yeah, that's a three dollar coffee. That's right, not right, a fucking right. six hundred dollar gadget. No, that's my point though. Is is that you know mm. there? Are, I what you're what I'm saying is there are people though, right? That would have saw you know somebody get recognized, his their face on the fucking screen, and that would have said, you know what? Go ahead, take it. You're right. I am not somebody who would probably give a freebie to someone I know can can of all people that come through that door can most easily afford it like i don't like the idea she's always double she's she's, she's that's what i call reversal she always goes against me it's never a i just don't like to i want to ride the wave baby all celebrities in la (laughs) already the wave you motherfuckers are already so entitled as is i'm not going to give you the free entitled what do you get so angry about you're a celebrity too now no i'm not you're a fucking celebrity too now stop it people say all the time people say all the time How's Kalila? Oh, I love Kalila. She's the and best. And I love officer. them back, but right, you're a celebrity, a celebrity too. So don't fucking. I'm not either. Then don't put me in the fucking boat. <laughs> you're happened? a celebrity. I'm not. You I'm are not, too. You're a I've celebrity. I've never been on television. Because you're I don't fucking have credit. writing a show, pitching a show. I'm on a fucking you're, podcast. You're doing, yeah, you're doing it with other two. You, you, uh, let me ask you this: Is Annie Letterman and Esther celebrities? I think so. So where are you then? They have the TV third? credits. They've been in this industry for yeah. like. 15 I saw you years. hosting a UFC fucking video. <laughs> For no. my friend, Jared. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still fucking. That's still on camera. Battle Long Beach, everyone. Right. Have my point is, is that just go along with the flow, baby. <laughs> All right. So you're. Uh, so what you're saying to me is, is that I was in the wrong in that situation. I just think that you probably are both in the wrong, but you you both could have avoided. Like I just just do it. It's like three seconds of your life to just put in. I know. Your okay, fine. And then you can mumble whatever obscenities you want after that. You're like, oh, stupid bitch. But that on your own, but without causing a scene. That's my style, at least. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Maybe I, How about you, George? I play it wrong? Um, no, I, I want to be more like you now. You know, I started off the nice way, but I'm getting a little bit... Uh, yeah, you got... What, a little bit more Karen, George? Respect, you know? He's yeah. a little more... Get the respect you deserve. It's not, res- it's not she- about respect. It's about common sense, man. Was she an older woman? No, she was like a young, like, you know what I mean? Latina Hawaiian, you know? <sighs> you mean a me? You mean Hawaiian? Me, exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I am. Exactly Kalala was one of you. <laughs> Latina Hawaiian. Is your kind, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You need to fucking keep the fucking fish hook in. My, the island Mexican. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what you... Why are you people like Proudly. that? Proudly. Yeah. I would have been like, if it was like, um, even if it was someone like Dustin Diamond... Oh, by the oh, way, he yeah. has stage four cancer. cancer. Oh, shit. Is, it's okay. that, is that what you said that? No. Oh. I just just threw his name up. I think he does have cancer, right? Yeah, he does. Just announced, yeah. yeah. But he's had um, run-ins with a law, is what you're saying. Yeah, he's a... Yeah, yeah. Well, Dustin and I, a couple of times on the road, I have not, I mean, but I've either followed him 
like he was the weekend act before me or after oh. me, right? I've never actually met the guy, but I, I just remember like going to clubs and then going, oh, we just had Dustin Diamond this last weekend. You know I mean, so there is like a thing there. And then, um, you know, but, you, but he's not like the, he's like a, he's not an A-list celebrity, right? He's kind of D, right? Well, wow, kick the man while he's down, why don't you? Yeah. All right, C then. Everyone As in cancer. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Good thing we're a comedy podcast. <laughs> Sorry, Where you say talking. stupid yeah. things here, <laughs> right? That was mean, but um, you know. But even if it was Dustin Diamond, I would be like, you know, what I mean, go ahead and have it. But anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Maybe I'm the one in the wrong. Maybe I'm the fucking little bitch in the situation. All right, but that did happen, and I want to apologize to that young lady. How about that? Is that what you want? Yes, I I'll, I'll make me feel better. All right, lady, I'm sorry. I should have just quickly put my fucking passcode in there, taken it, and said thank you, and walked away. In retrospect, I guess that's what I wanted to do, but I just make life so much harder for myself because I like confrontations. Yeah, you're so opposite. I know. What it, it's yeah, I don't know what it is. I hate I know. I just I mean it's I'm not afraid of a real confrontation if I genuinely feel wronged. Mm -hmm. I just don't like over stuff like that. That's just n so inconsequential and not important. Mm -hmm. Like I, it's not worth it. Like yeah. if it didn't involve my child or my dog or something that was really like high stakes for me, yeah, then yeah. But it's like in that moment, that's so dumb. Yeah. Also, I'll just I, there was a little growth moment too in Hawaii. I want to bring up. I guess um, it's not funny. Not to be funny. You know what I mean? It's not a funny idea, right? But there was this moment where um, you know, um, and this is probably people maybe listening can relate that you're really hard on yourself, right? That if you if you're if it's not perfect you 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 just rip on yourself and there's like mm -hmm. this internal monologue that you play in your head you know what I mean like you're a piece of shit I do that a lot do you do that yeah I do you do that or, all day long I think all of us well, except George yeah, yeah. Well, yeah George had a great upbringing <laughs> yeah 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 you piece we did of it shit. that's why this happens you know what I mean this is why <laughs> this is why you are where you are you know what I, mean? I just have this thing in my head you know what mm -hmm. I mean that constantly yeah it's the flogging plays. yeah it's flogging I flog myself. And um, Zach Knight, the actor that's on oh. Magnum P.I., um, who's interesting because he was um, he's somebody that I've known, never really talked to really, but it's somebody that I'd like been around since for 20 years. Because when I was on Mad TV, he was on a show called Life on a Stick. Do you know what Life on a Stick is? Is that the one with Charlie? Yes. Oh, I remember. So Zach Knight, Charlie Finn were the two guys. Right in life is on a stick. Is that about like a hot dog stick? Hot dog, yeah, hot dog on a stick and a mall. Mm. Right, right, which is weird. <laughs> what a weird premise, but I like it. Yeah, it's a cool. And then who else was on it is who we're gonna have on the podcast soon is Maz Drumani. Mm -hmm. He plays the manager on the show. Okay, so um, I was sitting there and there was a scene where I was in a fucking um van. So I imagine it's really hot. You're in Hawaii, right? And I had these all these technical lines I had to do. It was like weird the way it was written and it was long and I had to say it fast because I'm on a computer. So, you know, a lot of times when you're doing something like that, it's just like, like I like conversational things mm -hmm. in a scene. <clears throat> Gilbert, how are you? You know what I mean? And it's, I can memorize whatever, but when it comes to stuff like, you know, technical stuff like computer words that are like, mm -hmm. you know. Like the hacker stuff. I hacker stuff, that. you know what I mean? I don't know the words, so it's like I have to memorize the sound of the word because I don't know what the word is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Would you, it help if you looked up the meaning? It doesn't matter because if I've never heard of it, right? I'm still memorizing sound, you know, instead of meaning. No, what I'm saying is the sentence you are reciting or memorizing would um, would be easier to remember if you understood what you were saying, if you understood the meaning of what the words you were saying. Do you remember the word? I'm curious now. No, I, I can't even... That's how... Removed. <laughs> removed it is. I don't even know the words because I had to memorize the sound of them. Yeah. It wasn't just one. It was just a way it was a lot a lot of law references, all you know, different things, right? Yeah. I can do it, right? But not, you know, in a van when it's super hot, <laughs> right? And and they're like the sun's going down. Yeah. And they're like, We gotta get the shot. You I, know what I mean? Uh, you know, we gotta come on, you know what I mean? You have all that going. And I thought I was doing pretty good the last couple of days. And I was, I was doing pretty good. 
And there was this one moment, and I wasn't fucking up, but like I had this little big chunk of thing, and, and halfway during it, I just blanked. I just blanked. I just couldn't remember what the next thing was. Instead of going, and most actors, they go, line. And then, you know, the lady behind the goes, it's this. You know, it's not a big deal. But instead of doing that, I just went, I stopped. Like, da -da 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 -da. I stopped, and I put my head down, and I just said, I'm, I can't, I'm done. <laughs> you said you're done? Yeah. That's the it? growth moment? No, no, I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're... You might have regressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quit? No, no. She regressed. <laughs> no, then Zach Knight, he's in the front seat. He turns around and he says, Look at me. He goes, Look at me. I look at him. He goes, You're killing it. We love you here. You do everyone makes mistakes, right? You're doing a great job. Start start from the top. And that I don't want to get emotional, but you know, when actors do that, you know, to help you out in a situation. Mm -hmm. You know, Oliver Hudson did that when we did um, Splitting Up Together. I love him. I love him, too. So when Zach did that. A little too much. Me, too. All right, babe. You want to suck his dick? I get it. But um, <laughs> he's a family man. But um, when he did that, it was just like, oh, you know what I mean? But what a nice gesture. So that that happened as well. I just beat myself. I just shut down. And I go, I fuck. I hate this. You know what I mean? I, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I, you know, it's not funny, really. But it's. A, it's Did a, you get it right after that? No, no, but no. babe, I really. <laughs> <laughs> they cut, they cut the, the scene. scene. They cut the scene. <laughs> <laughs> I do notice that about you, though. Yeah, like even if let's say you go in for an audition, and even if you don't get the part, yeah, um, if you had an overall like supportive and positive. Um, environment at that audition yeah you i shine you you really shine and and you also want to go back almost immediately yeah like uh, yeah i mean there are there are some environments where if it's cold and empty and there's a feeling of there's no feeling there and i and i feel trapped right yeah i'm terrible well we freeze when we we were kids that were beat yeah so that's it's like what it, we freeze I think that's what in that yeah in that high pressure moment, it's like all we want to do is either fight or flight mm -hmm. and or freeze. Yeah. And then we're not all in our brain anymore. Like our blood has flowed to all flowing through like our periphery and nothing is up there anymore in our head. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. It, yeah. And it's like I would I think I would have been able to do it even if the director was like because, you know, the, Robocop was there. Oh, the, oh. The, you had a really rough experience with him. Yeah, so Robocop time. was there, but he wasn't directing my episode. Oh, he was just there? He would, no, he was directing the episodes after mine, but he was just prepping, right? But he was in my hotel room. So that was another thing, you know what I mean? The challenge of mine during my days off is to avoid Robocop. Let's remind the audience what happened with Robocop last uh, so week. Rob okay, so Robocop, he's a great actor. Robocop is a great actor. Peter Weller? Peter Weller, okay. okay. And he's a great director. He's everything. He's at the top of, of his field. Okay. He just has a tone in his voice that freaks me out. Right? Like I, I, you know, like I said, his opening line to me was, don't fuck this up. Like military style. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm like in a situation where it's like, when a director's like that, I just clam up like, what? Right? And then it's like, if you fuck up on the line, he'll, go, he'll shame you a little bit. We paid this guy a lot of money. He can't memorize three words, everybody. Seriously? Yeah. He does that. <laughs> and he'll go, like, one, one time we were at a table. It was the, the whole, like, it was the last scene of every Magnum P.I. There's it, The whole cast is there at a bar. Yeah. And we're always reminiscing about the episode. You know what I mean? Hey, John, thanks for, you know what I mean, getting me out of that jam. You know what I mean? Or whatever. So we're all there. We all have our sides, right? <laughs> and he walks by and he goes, oh, my God, the biggest losers I've ever seen. <laughs> Can't memorize any lines. Was, he's that type of guy, right? Yeah. And, he'll, and then he'll, go, he'll say stuff like, um, in between takes, he'll go, you've been to Taiwan? <laughs> I swear to God. Like he'll try to bond with you after he yelled at you. Random Asian guy. So he'll just come to, you've been to Taiwan? Man, the political, you know, atmosphere there, man, is in the seventies was a little rough, but right now, man, it's you know, letting loose. <laughs> and you're just kind of going, Yeah. And then you have to go, Yeah. Have Ta you been to Taiwan? No. <laughs> but I always go, Yeah, yeah, it's loose now. 
<laughs> the political atmosphere or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, Shaka, right? And he sat next to me too and talked about Korea. Oh, Korea back in the day, man. I was on in Pusong in 78. He just, everything's like something that has to do with Asia because he thinks that that's all I think about. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what is it with white people that sometimes think that all we think about is Asian shit? This is literally, this is, this is every conversation I have. Like as soon as I tell someone I'm Filipino. Yeah. The first thing they'll say is, oh, I love Lumpia. Lumpia. Right? Classic I love line. Lumpia. I have a friend. Oh, then Pancit and Pancit. They call pan- Pancit Pancit. Pan- yeah, yeah. That's li- every single time. But you know what? Mm. I don't say anything. I think that they're trying their best to like connect with me. That's all they know how. Yeah. And it is cringe, but I'm like, all right, yeah. They got Lumpia. You just do it back. That's why if some white guy goes, I'm from Alabama, I love Leonard Skinner. <laughs> you just have to do it back. I love fried Twinkies. Yeah. The Selma Walk loved it. <laughs> Remember the, the Selma, Selma Walk? The Selma Walk. The Selma, Selma Walk. walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. But um, do you think you can do a podcast with Peter Weller, or is that too? I would love to. You could. I think it'd be great too. Could you do a podcast, with Peter Weller or Ed Harris, in terms of energy? I love Ed Harris. I would only do Peter Weller and ask him if he number one comes up to me and goes, "Hey, I heard you've been talking shit about me on the." On your podcast, bring him on, yeah. right? Then I would go. Oh, let's hash it out. If you're in LA, okay, I will. You know what I mean? I would love that to happen, right? But um, I think Peter Rollo would be great. Uh huh. Let's have him. We're gonna have him. It would be an honor. Yeah, but um, so what, why was I bringing up Peter Weller again? Growth moment. You said yeah, growth moment. You gotta go avoid him. Oh yeah, so he was in the hotel, and I was. That was another challenge. I mean, of my days off, <laughs> was to like get off the elevator and look and scan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I didn't want to like have a, a confronta- confrontation. Also, I've been talking about him on podcasts, so you know that's another thing I do. Is how many times have I called you and said, "Hey, can you edit that out?" You know what I mean? Because I, I, I'll say shit and then I'll regret it later. Uh-huh. What is it about myself that I just say shit that I just regret? I mean. Isn't that everyone? I think that you just, um, this is a room with your friends. You let loose, and I think that that's the best way to do it. You're just getting shit off your chest, babe. No, I think that I'm a um, gossiper. Yes. I'm a number one. I think I'm a gossiper, and I'm, I can't keep a secret. You can't. No. Oh, my God, you can't. I can't keep a secret, and I just t- I have no filter. I just talk. You know what I mean? You and, know what, though, babe? But that's what makes me a good podcaster, I think. Yes, but also a very dangerous friend. I'm very um, dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is one secret that I told you. Uh oh. That what? I am so surprised you've kept. Oh, really? Because he forgot. Yeah, because he forgot. forgot. Oh, no, I don't perfect. think I forgot. I told you this secret. Well, can you t- say the secret now? We'll half, edit it out. Two and a half years ago we'll in the up. car. Yeah. No, I'm not, because Gilbert and George not don't know the secret. Why would I say it now? Oh. It's between you two. But I told it to you, yeah. and you were foaming at the mouth. You're like, babe, I can't keep this. This is too juicy. Please, you can't put this on me. Yeah, yeah. I gotta call that person now. And I was, and I begged you. I said, Bobby, we are over. Yeah. If you ever mention this again, yeah. And then you have not. You know, you're right. There are. God, cer- I want to know now. No, no. There are <laughs> detrimental. Okay, there are detrimental secrets. There's about five of them. That I know that I'll never reveal. Well, this one was friendship ending. Right. So, had- yeah. So, there, that's what those are detrimental secrets. But I'll wait in my mind. I go, can this get out there? You know what I mean? Let's see what the consequences. I mean, does, is it that severe? Yeah. Oh, he just won't talk to you for three weeks. Well, then I can throw it out there. You know what I mean? But there are some that I know. Like, my brother has given me some, right? That, like, he would he'll kill me. He'll literally murder me if I say it. I believe it. There's some from you. I don't. You don't. There's it, only one from me. There's two. There. What's the second? I can't say it. Say it. No. What you want me to say it? Hold on. Work- whisper it. No, I'm not going to whisper <laughs> it. We'll tell you afterwards. Really? I have a second one yeah, that's yeah. like life changing. Wait, that's as good that she forgot. That's interesting. That you forgot. Yeah, yeah. The thing that. Do he- I know any secrets from you? I don't have anything really. Do you have any? Have I ever told you any secrets? I know things. Excuse me. I, yeah, yeah. Gilbert and George we are literally things. the most... You better suck their dicks for the rest of your life because they know so much about us. Yeah. No, nothing. But our destinies are tied to theirs. That's true. We could crush yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. If we go down, we'll go down together. Because yeah. if you bring me down, we go down. Then we're going to go down together. Mm-hmm. My force. And I, look at me right now, Gilbert. You're a talented young man. Thanks, man. Right? And I feel like, you know, you have it really quite 
in terms of like the theatrical world, the stuff that you want to do, you were you were gonna get there, and you're gonna be a big actor and all that stuff, right? But if you try to bring me down, that's not gonna happen because I will fucking rip you. I feel like me and George literally do the opposite. We try to keep you up. <laughs> I'm at, that's you up. what I meant to say. I want to keep you up. I have a question okay. for you. Yeah. Um, obviously, we missed you very much while you were gone. Uh-huh. And you asked Annie and Esther to host <laughs> the show. Mm-hmm. Um, did you miss us? Did it give you FOMO that you weren't here in the room? Did you like that episode? When I started Bad Friends, right, there was, it, 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 I started it with a sense of kind of a guilt. Why? I'll tell you why. And I'm just telling you my honest uh, answer, and I'm, I'm not, okay, is because Tiger Belly for me is, um, it, and I, it, this may be true, may not be, but I think it's more toward the honest side, um, saved me in many ways, okay? Not only did it save my career, but it's, I think it saved us too as a couple. You know, it, it gives us something to do together, a project, you know. Um, there's a lot of trust that goes into something like this. And, um, you know, we've had our blowouts and we've had our, you know, our heads have butted. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's our little baby and it's our, you know, it's, it's literally like, you know, a part of us. It's our family member, Tiger Belly. And... Um, when I started with Bad Friends, I felt like I was abandoning it a little bit, you know what I mean? Because it's like, you know. But I, you know, I, I think I did Bad Friends because of all of us. You know, I think in many ways, I don't want to get into the financial situation, but in many ways, you know, um, I did Bad Friends for us. Okay. I also. But, but, there, but let me finish. Yeah. But there was a side of me that was like, thought, how great would it be? if, you know, Kalila could start something up with a couple of girls. And I've always thought because of guys we fucked, and and I also, I'm obviously I'm friends with a lot of female podcasters. I love what they're doing. So it's like, um, I thought, I think it would be good. At first in my head, I was like, how great would it be, you know, with, if it was like an all-female Asian podcast that you did? But then later, you know, I thought, you know, it just two really funny people. So... I think you, Annie, and um, Aster um, filling in for me, you know what I mean, on Tiger Belly, number one, was great. I don't have to see, because I don't listen to any of them. So, but I just already know in my heart. I never asked, how did it go, or anything like that. I just, like, I just know it's going to be good, right? because it's those two, right? And I'm excited to announce. Wait, we're not announcing anything. What are you? What are you saying? I just wanted your input on what you thought. I thought we we're making an announcement. We're not. Oh, all right. So here's, here's what. Can I just say what my dream is then? Yeah. What's sure, your let's dream? My dream is is that you, Annie, and Esther, right, would do a podcast together. Is my dream, for you. I think those are the two perfect. Esther's fucked up. In the brain. <laughs> She's a fucked up. Annie is gonna be so happy you said that. Because I, I, I saw her earlier, right? Mm-hmm. I saw her earlier today, right? And at the, my first reaction when I see her, I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" Mm. You know what I mean? She's fucked up. Okay, Annie is just garbage. She's human garbage with you know me walking around, just the floppiness of her. You know what I mean? It, there's just something, just you know what I mean? <laughs> like she sweats nicotine juice or something. You know what I mean? Nicotine juice. She just has that vibe. And I looked at you three earlier today and I went, that's it. I love it. They're both very talented young ladies and not young. but um, When you first started Bad Friends, I was really excited. I I never want to ever like uh-huh. m- feel like I mean, you, you have, we have our own thing, but I feel like you shine very differently across different people. Like that's just how life is like you are so funny with Santino and I completely completely I think that in one of the earlier episodes of Tiger Belly too I was like wait a second like you guys would be perfect to do this together and then Eric Griffin was like why would you say something like that (laughs) remember but it's the same way like I feel with Annie and Esther it's like if we were to ever do a podcast together you would be getting a completely different side of me because who I am um, with you is not who I am with them and I do tend to open up more in like uh, a girly way with them yeah where i wouldn't you know i'm for some reason i say way more fucked up things with them yeah it's like with andrew i'm more i here i would cave into my you know my my faults right 
Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, I go, all right, yeah, that was me. I bad or my bad or, you know, I should I have done this. You're right. You know, I try to like, you know, learn from my, you know, behaviors with Andrew. I think I, I would f- stand firm and not cave in as much. You know what I mean? Because I just fucking hate him. Sometimes. I just, it, you know, what I mean? I, when I look at him, I just go, God, there's everything about you irritates me. Right. So I think that, you know, you know, um, I wish we would have used um, the bad friends instead of calling it bad friends, Riffin without Griffin. Oh, <laughs> we almost named bad friends Riffin without <laughs> Griffin. Right. And when Andrew brought that up, I <laughs> chuckled on the phone so hard and I go, <laughs> but then I realized if we put that out there, uh, it would be, it would have been irreparable damage, devastating for Eric. Right. But how funny would that have been? Very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's like if me, Esther, and Annie started a podcast called Having a Time Without Rick. <laughs> and he's That's gonna, really funny. And he's going to clip this. It, you should have that. You should name it that if you do one with those girls. <laughs> and we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Shout but, out Rick, that, love yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Rick Just is kidding. A, Rick is an interesting guy, you know. <laughs> but here, there's there's another guy that's uh, you know, in the podcast world has really kind of taken a hold of his you know vibe and. I I there. love what he does. I love he works so hard. That pod that's not even a podcast. That's it's a show. show. <laughs> it's a show. Yeah, he really does fine tune it to make it and make it feel. It's it's a perfect show. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, and also I just love. He's a lovely guy. Mm-hmm. You know, wouldn't want to go camping with him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or like just long distance anything with him. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Or a vacation. But from afar, I'm a big fan of his. You know. Um, I'd like to do that with you guys post vaccine. Please. If we could all just jump in an RV together and yeah. just first, drive around America. First location. Um, I would, my first stop, I would like to, I've never been to Yosemite. Mm. It's not, I've also never been to the Grand Canyon, you guys. I've been to Yosemite. Let's do it. Have you been, be, been, <laughs> have you been to the Grand Canyon? <laughs> I've been to the Grand Canyon. I've been all over the place, but let's do it. I uh, yeah I just um I never got to really explore America in that way. I've also never been to Yellowstone. I've never been to Wyoming. Ooh. Wait, I, I think, think you, I went I, to I, my, Wyoming for a swim meet. Hey guys, we're gonna take a really quick break to share this amazing brand new sponsor. Upstart, Bobby. Yeah. You know that credit card? Yeah. <laughs> That one that you're afraid to look at. It freaks me out, Kalila. See what the balance because is. Because the balance, right? It, I, you know, I don't want to confront it, but it weighs heavily on my heart. Well, if you've been avoiding your debt, it's time to confront it, Bobby. What? What can I do? Upstart can help you face it and finally pay it off. F- really? Listen, last year showed us that you never know what life is going to throw at you. And if you use credit cards to pay for unexpected expenses, it, it can be, be overwhelming. Am I not right? Con- correct. Yeah. To- and it can take control yeah, I don't of want your it. life. But now you can take control back with Upstart so you know exactly what to expect. Why would you want to walk around with all this debt in your mind and your heart? Am I not right? It's not worth it. Upstart is the key yeah. to your solutions. If you have multiple credit cards, you know that tracking multiple balances, due dates, and, and website logins can be really stressful. So it, Upstart, it, 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 it yep, also finds smarter rates with trusted partners Mm -hmm. because they assess more than just your credit score, baby. And this is what it is. It almost like consolidates everything. Upstart makes things simple with one monthly payment in one place. Oh, my God. That's a relief. Double relief. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. It finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. Within a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans from one thousand to fifty thousand dollars. And guys, I'm not exempt from this. I have student mm-hmm. loans. There are a lot of things that I have to pay monthly. What a relief for me to just go to one place, pay one price, and get it out of my head. Tell us Find, about it, Guild. 
Oh, uh, Bobby, ahead, tell us more about ahead. it. No, you do it, Gilbert. Well, I you think wa- you should do it. Okay, well, if you want that double relief, find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash belly. That's upstart.com slash belly. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. I think you and I should do a RV trip, you and I. I'd love to go to Canada. Bring the, do- bring the dogs, though. Oh, I'd, uh, Gobi doesn't like long road trips, babe. You know that. But Julio and Remy do. Um, are we going to keep this house as an animal farm? or? Yeah, we, uh, we, there's new family members here. I mean, I fucking... I'll, I'll just be honest with you. When did you find out? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd land. <laughs> oh, you land? I land <laughs> in LAX. I'm like, oh, finally home. I'm going to go home, relax, you know. And all of a sudden, I get a text. Beep, beep. All right. I look at it. And it's like, oh, there was an emergency at the hospital. Or I don't know what the fucking thing was. I didn't say hospital. Oh, you said there was an emergency. Yeah. I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. It's right here. <laughs> this is what I get. I might have exaggerated it a bit. I, I don't care. That might have been a strategic move to do at last minute, too. Very good move. So here you are. There you go. So um, you say, babe. There were two dogs in an emergency situation, so I'm taking care of them downstairs for a couple days only. Couple days only. Are they still here? It's only been a couple days. Yeah, when are they leaving? Let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> no, let me do, don't get defensive. <laughs> don't get defensive. I'm not here for a fight. I'm just asking you a question. When are they leaving? Whenever they get adopted. Okay. Listen. <laughs> you trying to die? Listen. I know. Here we go. Listen, and it was an emergent situation because it was um, a homeless couple from Skid Row oh. who um, got ill and they could no longer care for their dogs. Um, the, that's to me is the most emergent situation. But I have always wanted to do more. I've always mm. wanted to help in any way I can. Um, and this is just one way I feel like I can do that. And yeah, those two dogs are with me now. Also, they're fucking perfect, by the way. You just met Momoa. The big one. The so big. Sweet. So sweet. He's the sweetest guy. And the l- tiny little uh, black chihuahua, her name is Lisa Bonet. <clears throat> She's like one of those birds that sits on top of like hippos in the, in, mm. in, by the river. All right. They just perch there. You don't even know she's there. She's so low maintenance. These dogs, homeless dogs are, are, are the best dogs, by the They're way. Also They're also best of friends. And so, um, but the pit bull. Is the biggest pit bull I've ever seen. So big. He's a big boy, we'll right? First. The biggest head I've ever seen. I mean, I, the only thing creature that I've seen with a bigger head is Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like that's your, your friend. That's your friend from Denver. Like God bless you, Marianne. If you, you guys are friends now, stop. I love her. I know about I, her. She has a very big head for her body, and that's it. That's a fact. You guys have very similar proportions. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. All right. Why? Do, I don't know why every time I attack Aunt Marianne that you have to attack me back. Well, it's because <laughs> it's like. For someone who, who who has your like bodily proportions, I'm just surprised I'm how much cute as fuck and their scientific. Proof. Well, you also look like a chicken drumstick, but okay, oh I, I, I don't know why it became that roast, <laughs> right? But why are you doing that? She's on a dais, bro. But let me just go back to the dogs, right? So the dog is the biggest, and then uh, Lisa Bonet is the size of My the, the paw of this dog. Yeah, but they're best of friends, right? And you're right. The, the dog seems like one of those, like, um, you know, there are certain birds that will hop on other birds, right, to get the food. Yeah. Like, you know, big, what, what, what is, what's a big ostrich, like an ostrich? Yeah. yeah. Will go, and a little bird will sit on top of an ostrich's sh- um, shoulders, because when the ostrich s- walks, it brings up mosquitoes and bugs from the ground. Yeah. And the other, you know what I mean, the little tiny bird will grab the food. Yeah. So but it's almost as if, like, like they're... They're symbiotic in that way. That's exactly mm, the that's word. Cute. That's the correct scientific term. I'm so surprised. Why? It's symbiosis. Yeah. I'm not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, so <laughs> we're, 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 are we gonna so we're gonna we're gonna have this we're gonna have these dogs for indefinitely. If you guys are interested in adopting Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet, please go over to Love Leo Rescue's Instagram and you can um, fill out an application there. They are They're sweet. just the sweetest easiest house guests we've had yeah so that's it we're animal farm is that so horrible yeah what's what's going on what text are you reading uh fucking thickhead (laughs) i'm so i'm so i'm so curious is it juicy 
Just give us a little, uh, is it juicy? Or oh, no? will you cut it out? Just keep it light. Yeah, keep it light. I can't keep it out. It, it's either we cut it out or not. Hey, look, babe. Look who's here. Hey. Oh, don't oh. go through there. Go the other way. Go over there. Come on. No, wrong way. Come here, baby. Come here. Don't say hi. Keep your mask. Oh. Hi, baby. Hi. Which what, what what's uh that's uh that's Lisa Bonet over there. She's very shy, but she's really sweet. She don't just pee, don't, pee. don't pee, okay? We're potty trained in this house. There, are like literally, she's uh, really hi, always Lisa. staying close to him. Oh, don't go through there. Cause does the camera get him, George? Yep, the wine is getting him a little bit. Now they're behind him. Let's go, Momo. 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 Oh boy. The little one hates me. <laughs> little one seems very timid. Yeah, she is. Come on, Momo. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Momo, come on. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's go, Momo. Wow. How do people find out about the dogs where you can How do I get food? apply Love for Love Leo them? Rescue. There you guys go. On Instagram. I cannot rave about them enough. They are <laughs> such sweet little angels. So sweet. Uh, would you guys like an unhelpful advice question? Yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. Unhelpful advice with Bobby and Kalila. Hey, Tiger Belly. My name is Chris. I am a 24-year-old law student, and I live with my girlfriend and her family in their house. When I was noted, uh, notified that school would be all over Zoom, I decided to live here so I could save money and not have to pay for an apartment closer to campus. The problem is my girlfriend developed a gluten intolerance over the past few months, and she constantly burps. It sounds silly, but it's very distracting, has even impacted our relationship. My desk is inside our bedroom, and the constant burping makes it very hard to concentrate on what I'm reading. She is transitioning over to gluten-free diet. Hopefully that helps. What should I do in the meantime? All the libraries are closed. My girlfriend can't stop burping. The house is small, so I can't really move to another room. I really need to have a quiet area where I can focus. Hopefully you all can help me. I love the podcast. What, oh God, she's like, wait, let me... So, so, so he's he's taking classes online. Well, they're stuck to they're quarantining together, quarantining. and uh, so basically they're stuck in a home together. And his girlfriend has a gluten intolerance. Right, right. No, I get it. So, um, there's something they invented called headphones. Noise canceling, right? Or yeah, just put music. your fucking. If you're on Zoom, you can't put headphones in and take the class that way. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. What the fuck is this? Then. You know well, what, what about when they're in just in bed together and she just is burping, burping, burping? But that, that, that has nothing to do with them. You did deal with that. It's like, you know, I have to deal with some of your shit. Like what? Your wet feet. Wait, no. <laughs> Does that oh. affect your livelihood? No, I'm just saying it's like, you know, she has she's wet. That sounds so wrong. She's <laughs> yeah, wet. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's that wet ass feet. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, you know, you, there are certain things that people like I, I'm sure obviously I have a lot of things you mean that you have to deal with. Can you give us one that, thing that you've had to dealt with, but you found a solution? I haven't Might found any solutions. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. There right. have been no solutions. There is no solution. House, only misery. Misery. Um, um, here's what I think. Well, actually, Bobby should speak to this because you are very sensitive about hearing people burp. It's funny because you burp, but when you hear other people burp, you feel grossed out. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. You Every time, I, even at the tiniest little burp from you, you're like, ew. You don't like burp and you don't like vomit. Yeah, I don't like vomit. That 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 for sure, I hate vomit. Do you gag when you see it? Not even vomit. I I'd rather poo. I rather have than vomit. Like in the house, he mm. cleans the poo. I won't clean vomit. He oh. will. He refuses to clean vomit. I just don't like it. You know, poo is easy. You know, um, yeah, because I don't vomit. You've never vomited. There, there's two types of people. There are diarrhea people, or there are vomiters. Yeah, yeah. I'm a diarrhea man. I'm all, a diarrhea all day, man myself. All day long. Diarrhea. Twenty four seven. You know what I mean? But for life. Diarrhea. Yeah. Have you ever seen me vomit? I have never seen you vomit in all this eight years. Yeah. Really? Never. No. Wow. I just don't do it. I've gagged. You don't even have a gag reflex. You'd Not be... really. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. You're, I cough. You're wasted I... on this heterosexual relationship. <laughs> you'd, make a f you'd make a man so happy with your lack of gag oh, reflex. Oh, George. Be, I, don't, I, I, I don't know if I can come up with it. <laughs> This week's Big Papaya is over at Patreon. Kyle Snuffer. Go ahead. Uh, bon no, you're supposed to do a Jeopardy thing. 
<laughs> Kyle, I say Kyle's not for it. You know what I mean? Guys that masturbate in the forest. Oh. <laughs> but then you're supposed to say, what is Kyle Snuffer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I say, what is Kyle Snuffer? All right. Yeah. Or you could just say Bon Johnson. Then you say, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. What is Bon Johnson? Forget it. Let's just say the names. <laughs> Kyle Snuffer, Bon Johnson, Rachel Wilkins, Melvin Flores, yeah. Rebecca Torres. Okay. Hafiz from Singapore. Yeah. Love that guy. Yep. Jamie Che Cortez. Jaime. Jaime. Aaron Wasterstrom. Wasterstrom. Nile Red. Read it the other way around, starting from Nile Red. Because Kyle now. Snuffer got a lot, so say Nile Red. Red Nile. Times. What is Red Wasterstrom now? Aaron. Let's do it backwards. Red <laughs> Nile. Wasserstrom Aaron. <laughs> Cortez Che Aime. Singapore <laughs> from Javiz. Torres Rebecca. Flores Melvin. Wilkins Rachel. Johnson Bond. Snuff for Kyle. Guys, those are our big papayas over at patreon.com slash belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. What? George, that video that we saw in Bad Friends, I'm not gay anymore. So funny. It made me laugh. Last night, I rewatched it, and I almost died from laughter. It's probably one of the funniest things. Can you tell the audience what video? No, we already said it on Bad Friends. Okay. I'm not gay no more. Just search it. Yeah, I'm yeah. not gay no it's more. Great. It's great. Have you seen it? I am uh, No. Yeah. It is. I am delivered. It, it's de like delivered. a sermon. Delivered. I am, I am delivered. Dude, <laughs> please watch it right now. I will I'll watch it. We will watch so it can, I, can I tell you what it is? Yeah, please. It's uh, So it's obviously, I don't know what church it is, but it's televised. And it's a... Um, Televangelist. It's right? a black church. And they have, you know what I mean, a young man who announces, you know what I mean, that he that the Lord saved him from being gay. Is he wearing a bow tie? Yeah, but it's obvious. It. But it's obvious. Number one, that he's still gay, and number two, it's obvious he doesn't want to be there, right? And he's just going through the motions, and it's so fucking funny. He's committing to it, right? And he's trying to convince himself that he's not gay, but you are. You just gotta take one for the team, I think. Like that's what my sister did when my dad, when when we first came to America. I've I've told this story before. Yeah. Um, we, my dad had fallen into step with a Nigerian Mennonite church uh -huh. because they were great people and they really helped him transition in America. And so my dad, as a thank you, would go, he was an elder mm. in a church. And so we would basically go to this church um, every Sunday. Um, and during these, um, every Sunday, they would have a, a, a part of the, what do you call it? Um, service where you would testify about how the Lord, how, how God is great and why God is great. So basically something that happened to you that week, right? Tiny things, big things. And so my dad basically was like, Coinda, you should go up there and testify. And she was like, number one, I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm, what the fuck is happening? Like, I'm only two weeks into my American tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm terrified. My sister, by the way, is a very introverted, shy girl. Uh -huh. Like she is not someone like me. Um, and she goes up there and she puts on quite possibly the most convincing performance of her life. She did, she was doing convulsions when she took in the spirit and she did like a Ric Flair dead man's drop oh my God. where she like her body like stiffened uh, yeah, like yeah. this. Uh <laughs> I wish I was there. And then she like rocked back and forth on her belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I was there. I want to see her. And story. then you know what? Uh, wh I, I was, I was scared because I thought that maybe she had been taken by the spirit. That's how convincing it was. Yeah. And she came back and she was like, I, I had to do it. Like these people are so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like these people have helped us so much in America. Like I couldn't not <laughs> do that. That that would be fun. We should do that. We should go start going to a church that does that. Yeah, and then have a competition to see who can get in further in terms of <laughs> believability. People like, I think Bobby I, I think I would kill it. I, I would do. Shit. I think I would. Oh my god, we gotta do. All it. you hear is Bobby going, "I'm not gay anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gay anymore." No one even. No one no even one accused him of gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you. I next love you week. guys. We love you. Bye. You guys. Bye. <laughs> Um, so last week on our episode with Annie and Esther, I told them that before you left Hawaii, you asked that I, um, um, plan a wedding and I was like, well, we're not engaged. And then you said, we are engaged. We're getting married. Wh Wait, how do you think this works, babe? You're I just, engaged? I wanted clarification on this. Yeah. We're not engaged. 
How does this work for you in your head? What's the what's the what goes first? Telling people. Told, Are you kidding all me? All the people at Magnum PI weren't getting married. They always said congratulations. <laughs> Is it the dream you've always wanted? I mean, no, I don't know. Listen, I don't know how to do it the other way. I don't want to do storybook. Okay, that's I, fine. And I don't want to do storybook. I'm not gonna get on my knees. I'm not gonna put the fucking ring in a fucking cake cupcake and have you eat the middle of the cupcake and then have their have. The okay, ring so are we mafia handshaking on this then? No, we're just gonna say it. I'm getting a handshake. We're getting married. Oh. Uh, we're engaged. <laughs> go ahead. I guess. Let's go. Let's move on. That's it. Is that real now? Can we confirm this? Ask him. That's it. Who is this? Two one. This is gonna go out to everyone. Are you confirming? You Look, are he has gay. to take a phone call. That's how important this engagement is. To yeah, him. we're getting married. We're getting married. Let's go. Let's read. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how non. That's how I want to do it. It's, it's been, better that way. It's done. It's, it's so rude, is what it is. No, I, want, I, I wanted to make, make it make you so angry about. It. No, I don't want to do it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I told everyone at, at Magnum I was. Pretty gave me a hug. I mean, she didn't give me a hug, but. Yeah, she did give me a hug. It's like saying that you're dead. It's the same thing. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. She died. And I was like, congratulations. I go, you can come to the wedding. We should maybe do it in Hawaii. So we can, you know, I don't have family all in America. Magnum, all the Magnums. So you are engaged. I'm looking at you now. Are you accepting this? Yes. She already accepted it. We're doing it. I want you him to it, accept though. it. You plan it, though. I'm, I'm going to have Gilbert and George plan it. <laughs> Will you guys plan it? Yes. But it's got to be in either LA or Hawaii, somewhere where all my celebrity friends can come. Oh, my God. This is a problem. He knows all the vendors. I'm a couple of